Thanks for tuning in. In this episode, Preparing for the Unknown. Hi, I'm Laura Beth Ezel for HXGN TV, and joining me today, we have a special guest. This is Joe O'Hare, who is the Superintendent of Field Operations for the Boston Emergency Medical Services. Joe is here to discuss with us his experience in being on site during the 2013 Boston Marathon bombing. He'll share his insight into what they took away from that event. Uh, that can help other agencies for preparing for major events around the world. Joe, thank you so much for your time today and joining me. Oh, thank you. Thank you for having me. Joe, first just tell our audience, you know, a little bit about your background and uh, your work as a Boston EMS responder. Sure. So I've been an EMT paramedic uh, for 39 years now. Wow. Uh, I, was, I was young back then. Um, <laughs> <laughs> risen through the ranks. I worked for a private ambulance company and then went to Boston uh, 26 years ago. Uh, rose up the ranks through EMT to paramedic to deputy superintendent and now I'm the uh, superintendent of field operations. So kind of overall see the, uh, manage the day-to-day the -day operations of the department. You know, it's easy just to say that many years, but you think about how many things you have experienced in that time. Uh, you, you know, just, uh, I know you've, you've been through a, a lot and seen well, a lot as yeah, an EMS it is. responder. It's, it's, you know, it's really the nature of our business. We, mm -hmm. you know, most of our calls are not life-threatening calls. Most of the people we see just need, you know, just need some help. And, and then, then there are always those who are really sick or really injured that, that we have to take care of every day. So you were in charge of the EMS dispatch operations on the day of the 2013 Boston Marathon bombing. Can you tell us, tell us a little bit about what happened on that day and how the Boston EMS responded? Sure. So, you know, the marathon is always a big event for us mm -hmm. every year in Boston. It's a very uh, family-oriented event. So, you know, it was, it was a, a beautiful day. Uh, the sun was out. The temperatures were good. Um, you know, our staff was in place. We had our medical stations set up and, uh, and all of our personnel uh, along the two miles. Uh, it's only two miles out of the 26 that actually live in Boston. Um, so it, it was a normal day. Uh, everything was going along well uh, right up until the time of the first explosion. Um, it took everybody a couple seconds to really process that. Right. Uh, then the second explosion happened very shortly thereafter. And, uh, and then, you know, everybody really just reverted right to their training and, and mm -hmm. started to take care of patients, you know, as they're, as they're trained to do. Okay. Well, as you said, it was a very stressful and emotional day. You know, the Boston Marathon, as you said, it's, it's very popular, not just in Boston. I mean, people know it worldwide. Sure. You know, so it was a very emotional day. And how did the extensive planning and training help EMS personnel and staff to react effectively that day? And, and did you have a plan for peer support then? Sure. So actually, we we train uh, constantly. Our folks, right from the uh, from right from the first day of the academy, we train them in mass casualty incidents, in incident command. So we uh, we start that off very early in the process, and then every year, all of our EMTs and paramedics are, are you know attending training nine months out of the year for a full shift. Uh, so we keep up with that, um, and so you know really it it's a planned event. So we we actually mm -hmm. plan it as an as a disaster event every year, uh, never really expecting that it's going to happen uh, right. until that year. Um, but, but our folks did exactly what they were supposed to do. They, they immediately went to work, started taking care of patients, uh, arranging to get ambulances in to transport them very quickly. Um, so, you know, that was, uh, that was something that your training paid, uh, paid off every day. So um, as far as peer support, we have a very robust peer support team, mm -hmm. mostly made up of our own people. Uh, who we send for training in PTSD and stress management and those kind of things. And then um, we have a clinician available at all times. So, you know, if we have one of our employees who's struggling with a particular incident or mm -hmm. even stuff outside, you know, outside of work, uh, we, we try to make sure that, that collectively the department uh, as a whole, you know, takes care of those folks because that's really, that's really the, first, the first thing that we need to do is make sure our people are okay. Right. So the days that followed the bombing, you know, included the pursuit of the suspects. Now, you were in the field as the EMS commander. So how did your role and participation change? So, you know what, on, on the day of the bombing, uh, I was in the command center. We witnessed, uh, we witnessed the bombing actually on, you know, the large screen TVs. We started to coordinate the resources. Mm -hmm. um, and really the city shut down. Uh, we closed public transportation, uh, roads were blocked, people were ordered to stay in their homes by the police. 
Uh, so it was really a long, uh, a long four day event and it continued right on, um, right into Friday. Uh, obviously on Thursday night, uh, there was the, uh, the shootout in Watertown, which is one of our adjoining mm -hmm. uh, towns. Mm -hmm. And then the pursuit of the suspect. Our role at EMS is is we always go with the Boston Police Bomb Squad and their and their SWAT teams. Hi. We train with them extensively, so we're very aware of how they they operate, um, all of the things that we need to know about their equipment and how that works. So that was our role. We were assigned to to protect them, to watch over the public should there be a you know an illness, an injury, an accident that something that happened during the course of that. Um, so. By the time we got to Friday, when they finally identified where he was, and um, and you know, and captured him, uh, our role was to look out for the police officers, and and in the end to look out for him because we ended up transporting him to the hospital as well. So it was a it was a much different role. I was you know we were down there with the police. Right. We were looking. It's very. Um, it was a very busy scene. A lot of police officers. A lot of uh, a lot of long guns. Um, People were very, people were very nervous about what was going on, and and, and of course, the, all the people in the neighborhood um, right. were very concerned about what was going on. So you know, that's kind of our responsibility is just to keep an eye on everyone and make sure that they're safe. Okay. We've heard of technology being referred to as a force multiplier to response efforts and enabling situational awareness. Um, what are your thoughts on the role of technology in instances when tragedy? you know, strikes. Sure. So, you know, I think one of the advantages we have in Boston is that, you know, the CAD system is shared between the police, the fire department, and, EM and EMS. So mm -hmm. information is able to pass very quickly from one dispatch center out to the field, out to the commanders in the field, and to the personnel on scene. Um, you know, very quickly on the day of the bombing, cell phones were overwhelmed. Right. Uh, they, they wouldn't function at all. Uh, we found the text messaging did work. A little periodically, uh, a little sporadically, um, but we have a lot of training. We have a lot of interoperability with our radio system, so it allows the police and EMS to, to communicate with each other as necessary. And we have a lot of relationships with these folks that that are long-standing relationships that that allow the technology to really assist us to get our job done. Okay. Situations like the Boston Marathon, you know, uh, called for responses from multiple agencies. As, as you said, you've given instances of how you all had to work together and organizations from all levels of, of government and across state lines even. So what are some things that you can share with us? Things that, you know, uh, we can all learn and improve on, on regarding planning, coordinating, and, you know, communicating with multiple agencies in an event like this. Correct. So really it's all about relationships with us. Um, mm -hmm. For many years we've built up relationships with not only our local agencies, our police, our fire department, um, you know, the state police, uh, but that extends to the Secret Service, to the Federal Marshals, to the FBI. We work with these folks all the time. You know, in a case like this where, where a, a normally uh, peaceful event goes, goes sideways, mm -hmm. um, it's it's, it's not the time to be handing business cards out to people. Right. You know, we know these folks, they know us, we know what our responsibilities are, we know what their job is. So that, that kind of pre-planning, and then it's the training. You know, so we do training with all of these agencies, whether it's, whether it's just the, the average cop on the street and one of our EMTs, whether it's the FBI, um, their, their SWAT teams, the Boston Police SWAT teams, we train with them periodically so that everybody has an idea of what, of what needs to get done should something like this happen. Well, we appreciate your time. Is there anything else you'd like to share with our audience? No, I think you know, what's really important is, is we look at you know, an event like this was, was really something that showed the training and cooperation between our folks and the other agencies that we deal with is so, so important um, when something like this happens. And really our, our role in this particular uh, case was to make sure that we took care of those that were injured and they were very severely injured. It was a tragedy that we lost three young lives that day, but in the end all of the people that we took care of went home uh, eventually despite devastating injuries and that's, and that's the thing I think we're most proud of. 
All right, Joe, we can't thank you enough for coming and sharing your story. Oh, well, thank you. And sharing your expertise, it. you know, to help other agencies uh, that we hope don't have to go through these things. But unfortunately, right. today we have to be prepared. We do. We for do. Them. You're right. So thank you so much for your time. You're welcome. Thank you. For more information about this topic, you can go to www.hexagonsafetyinfrastructure.com. Also, to watch additional episodes and to learn more, you can go to hxgntv.com. Thank you for tuning in.